Prince Andrew stepped back from official royal life over a year ago now, and for all of the scandal he's embroiled in, seems to have gone quite quiet. Mail Plus reporter Jess King has been taking a look at what's going on with Prince Andrew. It's been four months since Prince Andrew's father, the Duke of Edinburgh, passed away, and the last time the prince spoke publicly to the press. We've lost almost the grandfather of the nation. Um, and I feel very sorry um, and supportive of my mother, who's um, uh, feeling it, I think, probably more than everybody else. The Duke of York has been out of the spotlight since stepping down from royal duties in November 2019. The decision came following scrutiny over his friendship with the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and the backlash to his BBC interview about the scandal. The Duke has always firmly denied any knowledge of Epstein's offending. The American financier was arrested following allegations that he was trafficking underage girls, but died in prison while awaiting trial. This November, Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is due to go on trial in New York, charged with helping to procure underage girls, allegations she denies. As the Daily Mail's associate editor explains, the case will no doubt be watched very closely by Prince Andrew's legal team. So obviously their concern would be, and it's no secret, I mean, he was once a very close friend of Ghislaine Maxwell and obviously Jeffrey Epstein as well, what will the collateral damage be for him? How, will his name feature in the prosecution do documents in the trial? Uh, and will his name be mentioned by the accusers in some way or another? You know, it's, there's a real risk that he will be dragged into this. He, he is not on trial. Ghislaine Maxwell's on trial, but his name could feature prominently uh, in or outside of the courtroom. There has been a Mexican standoff, those are the phrase, the phrase used by his own team to describe the standoff between his lawyers and their lawyers. The Americans want to interview Prince Andrew in person, not with a scripted interview, they want to do it here, face to face. He's, he's saying through his lawyers, or has been saying, I don't want to do that, I'll answer questions, I'll give you a statement, I'll answer your questions in writing. Andrew's lawyers evidently don't want to put him on offer face to face to the FBI and their legal representatives. Unanswered questions remain regarding Prince Andrew's relationship with Epstein. The former head of royal protection in the Metropolitan Police says the forthcoming trial could be uncomfortable viewing for the entire royal family. I think it's going to be extremely difficult, one for Prince Andrew, but the ongoing embarrassment to the royal family and sadly will just re resurrect itself again. He hasn't carried out any royal duties, although he does still get royalty protection, both at home and indeed when he's traveling. Again, that's a matter that might be decided by others whether that's appropriate as he's not doing any royal duty, uh, but that would depend on the risk, of that, uh, the risk uh, and the intelligence in respect of that factor. But the truth is, um, he's in a difficult position. Prince Andrew maintained that he did not see, witness or suspect any suspicious behaviour and said he unequivocally regretted his ill-judged association with the businessman. He also strongly denies allegations made by Virginia Roberts that he slept with her three times, including when she was 17 and a minor under US law. The Duke's links with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell have continued to haunt him, but only time will tell how much damage it could do long term to the monarchy. Well, Sarah, the summer tends to be when things are quiet, but this situation with Prince Andrew just keeps dragging on and on yeah. with no resolution. Do you see it ever resolving? I don't think so. I don't think anyone really knows what's going on. I just think there's obviously some sort of blockage in the system, isn't there? And I think this, I, it's not going to go away. Um, and until, you know, until the Americans get what they want, which is him on an airplane mm. <laughs> in America, uh, try a trial by whatever, that, you know, and, and I just don't think, I honestly don't think the, the, the Queen's not going to give up her favourite son to the, you know, wolves, is mm. she? Do you think? I don't. Just can't see it. Well, we've got this situation now with Ghislaine Maxwell's trial in November, which may be the thing that unblocks the u bend here, isn't it? If what Stephen Wright is saying yes, is correct, I mean, do you think know. he's worried about that? I don't know if the two things are 
are connected, perhaps they are. Perhaps yeah. the FBI is waiting until after that trial. But no, it's going to be, I'm sure that Prince Andrew will be very nervous. You know what it's like in a court case, things can be said, um, you know, in a prosecution which don't need to be, um, they don't, there doesn't need to be the evidence necessarily. They're presenting a but also case. the American legal system is very different from ours and they have this plea bargain system where basically you just admit that you're guilty and then you argue about how much time you spend in jail. It's 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 very different. The sort of the legal account it's it's a different system. I'm sure there's a lot of nerves about the yeah. court case in, in the palaces generally. Tell me this, I, I don't have the knowledge, I'll admit. Is the is the Queen in a position where she's able to protect Prince Andrew in these circumstances is that something that that people are speculating about um no she's not i mean he he's subject to the law but uh, here he hasn't been accused of of any crime at all you know the fbi just wants to speak to him as a witness and mm. i think essentially they're just arguing about what form his cooperation takes mm. does he give an interview does he give a written statement where is it it's all that those type of technicalities but you see he won't i mean he won't want to submit to their he won't want to dance to their tune no you know, I'm sure if he wants to, if they want to talk to him, they're going to have to come over here and do it. And what are they going to do? Extradite him to America? They can't do that. They've got no legal basis on which to do that. As you say, he's not accused of any criminal wrongdoing. If he's just, if they want to question him as a witness, they can't make him go to America. They can't make him do any of the stuff. Legally, I can't see any way that they can. But so if maybe, he's done nothing wrong, why not just do it? But uh, Well, because I suppose because then then that's a slippery slope to goodness knows what else. I don't know, maybe their view is if we just, you know, front it out, it'll eventually go away. I, I mean, but I can't yet, see it going away. Here we away. are still talking about it yeah, and I'm exactly. sure we will I just continue to. But one person who is still on Andrew's side is his ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson. She was on ITV's Lorraine this week, talking to Christine Bleakley, promoting her new book, and took the opportunity to advocate for the prince. Let's have a look. Sarah, Andrew and Fergie, the love story of our age, I, th I think they spend more time together as ex-husband and wife than my husband he, and I do. They, but what, what do you make of this? They have such a civilised divorce, don't they? Yeah. It's, 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 it's sort of, you know, quite nice, really. I, it's, I, I think she, she came on my podcast, actually, yesterday and nice plug uh, what's she, your podcast called it's called the female half there hour. you go <laughs> check it out um, everybody and it's sort of meant to be a less woke woman's hour it's basically me talking <laughs> somehow about i think you can manage makeup. that <laughs> but no she came on she was very sweet and uh she i think she's I, dare i say it i think she's quite a nice person i think she's sort of i mean you know obviously given what she's lived through and all that stuff but i thought it was quite interesting about how yesterday she said oh you know i just i quite like people just to sort of uh, see me as I want, as I really am, rather than all these sort of assumptions that people I mean, have made about how me is over that the possible, years. Though, really? It's really difficult. It's yeah. really difficult. And um, and I think that she's. But I do think it's very important for her to. To I think she's quite a hail fellow well met person. She's she's she wants to be friends with everyone. She does talk in my podcast about being a massive people pleaser, mm. which is mm. partly why perhaps that's why she still gets on with Andrew because I suspect she's just not one of those people who likes to make enemies. I think she she's sort of she just wants to be everyone's friend and 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 seems to sort of succeed quite well. I, what I always think of Fergie and and to an extent Andrew is that I think their daughters are, are, are rather nice and mm. seem very well balanced given all the difficulties. Indeed. Um, I think if you can bring up two children in such a difficult environment and and, and for them to be relatively centred as they seem to be, but also, you know, just relatively normal, I think that there has to be something good about you. In so yeah. so do you, you think that with that clip from Lorraine, with that sort of like that gentle, positive nod about Prince mm. Andrew, mm. is that is that re does that help to rehabilitate no, him? No, I don't think it does rehabilitate him at all in the eyes of the public. I think, you know, I just think that she, that's her view of Prince Andrew. I mean, you know, and she obviously has a very, very unique view of Prince Andrew, doesn't she? Mm. I mean, I don't know if, it, if how much it helps because we all know how close they are. She still essentially yeah. lives with Prince Andrew. Mm. Um, so, no, he needs, it's entirely separate, I think, Andrew's problems from Fergie, who, yeah, we all love him. I'm looking forward to reading her book. Yeah, I, me too. I mean, it's, you know, it's no mean feat. It's actually harder than a lot of people think to write she didn't a write Mills it. and Boone book. What? She, she got one of those top Mills and Boone writers to write it, whose name I've forgotten. I think it's... No, I think she would say they so collaborated. So how does that work then? Yeah. Tell me how that works. <laughs> I think it's like a ghostwriter. I mean, I think she hums up with the ideas. I mean, it is based loosely on her great, great 
aunt or someone, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we, we, she talks on your podcast, I believe, about achieving this book outside of her yes, royal I connections. Mean, I mean, come on. You know, she's, I mean, she <laughs> yeah. has written all lots of books. She's written all the budgie books, which have been very successful. And she does, and she's done a few autobiographies, I think, hasn't she? Yeah, she's written loads of books. She's written loads of books. I mean, it's sort of well over 50, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the sort of, I think, but it was this book was written in collaboration with a professional Mills and Boone writer, mm. um, you know, some someone who actually because you know Mar Mills and Marguerite Boone is, K, I believe her name right. is. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. I thought she was called K something, but you're mm. absolutely right. She's Marguerite K. I mean, Mills and Boone is basically a format, isn't it? It's a, it's a it's a production line. Uh, you know, they write certain types mm. of books, and there are certain rules about you know how much snogging you can have and <laughs> and and what words you could use and stuff like that. So can we all get a, a Mills and Boone book deal? Well, I know enough about love sheaths and throbbing chests. We should Come do on. what we enjoyed yeah. reading it on. We read a section of it we on this programme before. We yeah, did so. do that. I'd forgotten yeah. about that. Yeah. No offence. Uh, I'm yeah. available for the audio book if, <laughs> if Fergie needs me. But what do you think about this uh, image of, and I can completely see it actually, Fergie and Diana bouncing on bouncy castles together. Well, they were always famously sort yeah. of uh, naughty, naughty, naughty girls together, but weren't they? They were, but we have to be a bit careful because, I mean, Fergie did fall out with Diana. Yeah. And I think at the time of well, Diana's death, Diana, didn't, didn't everyone fall out with Diana? They hadn't spoken for a long yeah. time, yeah. you know, so let's not pretend they were sort of best friends until the end. Um, yeah. But that they certainly were great friends in the past. Hmm. Um, well, on that note, on that happy note, <laughs> let, let's take a look at what Fergie had to say about Diana. Yeah, I think she'd beat everybody to the bouncy castle, but it's endlessly tantalising, isn't it, to think about what Diana would have thought of her daughters-in-law. I mean, I think certainly with, with Fergie um, loving having her grandchildren now, mm. it, it is poignant to think that yeah. um, Diana's um, not around to enjoy that. And I'm sure she would have um, been a wonderful grandmother. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think she would have, yeah. I think she was very good with children, Diana, wasn't she? Well, she, you know, yeah. she loved children. She had a real sort of joie de vivre in that respect. She was very good with her kids. Do you think that it's, I mean, given what you were just saying, Richard, do you think it's strange for Sarah Ferguson to be talking about Diana in this way or it's fine? Or? Well, to, to be fair, she, she gets asked about it. Yeah. I think she always yeah. tries to, to give an honest answer. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you want to dwell on the positive, don't you? Yeah. And, and they were great friends. I remember, didn't they dress up as police women and turned up at Annabelle's together and things like that? So they, they had their... But also, well, it's fine. First. I mean, I think Diana was part of her use. I mean, it's 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 fine. It's normal to ask a per I, I think it's perfectly okay for her and, to talk about I, it. I love looking at those photos of them yeah. from them because they're two women who only understand what it's what each other's position is like, which yeah. makes it kind of sadder what's happened with yeah. Kate and Meghan, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, I think what's interesting difference between Fergie and Diana is that Sarah Ferguson obviously set about to make her separation and make her divorce as you know, to sort of pour as much cold water on it as she possibly could. Whereas Diana sort of went nuclear, didn't she? Mm. So she very much went the sort of revenge route. Yeah. Whereas Sarah Ferguson went the sort of, I, I think the more traditional aristocratic route, route yeah. which is, which is, you know, it doesn't work out. It's a bit of a shame, but we can still be friends mm. and everyone can be civilised for the sake of the children and the sake of the family and the sake of the family's reputation. Whereas Diana just couldn't do that she and and she had mm. to do i mean in a to an extent she's she she did what harry is doing now which is to torch the place you know she she's not okay to just sort of say well okay this isn't really what i want to do and it hasn't really worked out but you know i don't hate you and i'm not going to try and destroy you she really i mean in the same way that harry just wants to you know, literally is torching the royal mm. family as yeah. he leaves she did the same and i i think if I, you know, I think I'm more on the Sarah Ferguson side of things. I don't see why you have to, you know, it's okay to not want to do something anymore. It's okay not to want to be part of something, but it doesn't mean to say you have to bring it down. You can still be friends and you can try and be civilised about it. I know it might sound strange given Prince Andrew's current troubles, but I do think genuinely that they provide an example to us all about how you can get on with you know, with former husbands and wives and raised children. I am endlessly fascinated with it. I, you mm. know, I can't think of one ex-boyfriend I'd ever want to talk to. Little, <laughs> but anyway, hey, I had all my killed. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for you on our YouTube show. But to see the rest of this episode, including some more fascinating royal revelations, head to www.mailplus.co.uk forward slash royals or click the link on screen now.